Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the breech cutter and we're going to be going over each of its overclocks and a build that I would recommend for it. This is not going to be a full comprehensive guide of the particular overclock for each overclock. Those are saved for separate videos so if you'd like to see them you can. This is Engineer's second secondary weapon. This weapon is a very interesting one and let's just talk about the base breech cutter just to begin with. The base breech cutter is probably one of the strongest weapons in the game. It is ridiculously powerful against basically everything so long as you can get within range. It is a short to medium range option depending on how you would like to build it. It shoots out a slow moving beam that deals high damage to everything as well as it can pass through walls or through objects and still do damage to things on the other side so you can shoot through walls to some extent with this weapon and it does really high damage per second. Those are all basically the pros to the breach cutter. The cons of the breach cutter are generally that it doesn't hold a lot of ammo and it doesn't function very well at very long range and that's about it for cons but it is still very strong against big single targets as well as crowds. So let's talk about the overclocks. Our very first overclock is spinning down Death. This is an unstable overclock for the breach cutter. This one severely nerfs your overall damage. It also nerfs the amount of ammo you have, the amount of ammo that you have in your weapon. But for all of that, it gives you a blender that just spins around and chops everything up, which is really cool. And visually, this is really awesome. This also increases the projectile's lifetime, so the projectile will sit on the ground for much longer or wherever you choose to put it. I guess the other sort of downside to spinning death is that the breach cutter no longer is actually shot. So it is very short reach then and it's best used in like choke points or defending areas where you can force all the bugs to come through. It's also really good with the lure grenade. The way I like building this particular overclock is like this. So I'm running extra duration in tier one. This is just so our blender sits on the ground longer. Longer reach in tier two. This one can be pretty useful. You could also take ammo in this tier though. Ammo is really good for this one. The wider width just makes it so that you cover more of an area with the blender. Quick deploy in tier three. That makes it so your breach cutter shot is instant. However, you could go with the faster reload with the breach cutter. That works too if you want to throw this out a little bit further. I know a lot of people that just like taking that one just for that reason. Usually I don't take the reload speed on the breach cutter simply because I have born ready that triggers and gets me my weapon reloaded that way. So I tend to just kind of keep it this way. However, if you don't like that your beam has to stay exactly where you fire, then this might be a decent option for you. In tier four, I'm going with armor breaking. I like this one over the stun for this overclock, uh, although stun is really good by itself. It's just the combination that I'm using for this weapon where armor breaking can really shine, but either one in tier four is really good. So pick whichever one you'd like. And then in tier five, I usually go with the plasma trail. However, you could go with something like triple line split and cover more of an area. Triple line split does not triple the amount of damage that you get from the breach cutter. I get that question a lot. It doesn't actually increase the damage whatsoever. Even if all three beams are hitting something, it will still only count as one beam. It just gives you more room to actually hit the enemies. Now what I'm pairing this with is Neuro Lasso from the Loki. This is a kind of quirky option to be putting together. The main idea is to throw the breach cutter shot out into a crowd and then use the low key so that you can slow everything down. Not necessarily even using ammo from it, but letting the breach cutter do a lot of the damage towards crowds. This can also work against large targets, although you're not going to be stunning things like the uh, dreadnoughts. Uh, if you wanted to take the stun on this, which is potentially another reason to take armor breaking. Armor breaking also works really well against the bigger enemies like the Praetorians too. A bit of a weird choice for a loadout, but I do kind of like this combination. It is pretty funny, but it can be a little bit limiting overall because you don't have a whole lot of shots at the breach cutter and you don't have tons of ammo for it either. So the Loki will kind of have to carry you and the Loki can th run through ammo quickly too. So be sure to get that nitrous so you can get resupplies. For our second overclock, we have Roll Control. Roll Control is a clean overclock, which is a pretty funny overclock. I actually enjoy it quite a bit, although plenty of people say it's the worst overclock for the breach cutter and they're not entirely wrong about it. So what Roll Control does is when you fire out the beam, you can then spin the laser and that's it. Almost to a full 360 degrees, not quite though. And if you choose to let go of the trigger while you're still holding it down, then it will just stop at whichever angle you chose to fire it at. This can be a little bit useful on certain mission types if you want to try to correct the beam to hit multiple bugs. It can be kind of useful if you're trying to use the breach cutter against Bactera, although the breach cutter is not that great against Bactera a lot of the time. This can be an option to kind of help you with it. I find it to be a pretty fun overclock, although it doesn't really give you anything. There's no other upside or downside to this overclock. So you can build it however you'd like. I chose to build mine like this, which is usually my standard breach cutter setup. Larger mag size, more ammo, quick deploy, stun, and then plasma trail. You can mix it up however you'd like though. 
basically everything kind of works with this one and it can be pretty funny with the triple line split too since you can throw out three beams at once since this one is just a clean overclock and you can kind of build it however you'd like you can also take whatever primary weapon you would like as well i just said to take cycle overload for the warthog auto shotgun this is a pretty strong overclock in general it works really well at close range this particular build is more set up for close and medium range it doesn't do well against long range enemies and it also doesn't do incredibly well against mag terra most of the time if you can kind of bait them into a tunnel then you can kill them pretty easily but out in the open it can be a little bit more rough basic idea of this one is to get up close and do a lot of damage really quick our third overclock is our second unstable overclock this is inferno inferno makes it so your breach cutter shots now can light things on fire which can be really useful in certain situations it does nerf your damage and it does nerf your armor breaking so there is a little bit of damage drop off there not that it usually matters with the breach cutter Unless, of course, you're taking this on a Dreadnought mission, in which case then it is a direct nerf to the Breach Cutter. In every other mission, I would consider this just a direct buff to the Breach Cutter. The way I like building this is the same way that I usually build my regular Breach Cutter. So I'm running extra mag size, more ammo, quick deploy, stun, and then plasma trail. You can kind of take this however you'd like. Again, you can go a triple line split in tier 5. That works too if you just want to potentially hit more enemies and light them on fire. This works really well against crowds and it works really well against almost everything besides dreadnoughts. That's about the only thing that it doesn't work incredibly well against. Or again, enemies that are way outside your range or sometimes Mac Terra. And this one actually pairs pretty well with just about anything. It's one of my favorite breach cutter overclocks. For this, I decided to take it with turret EM discharge for stubby. This lets you do pretty decent crowd control with stubby as well as some slowdowns and applying electricity on the enemies. So you can also light them on fire from the breach cutter, have two status effects going, that's always nice. The turret EM discharge is also just super ammo efficient too, so it takes you forever to run out of shots with it. And then the breach cutter is pretty good for clearing up any sort of crowds or big enemies that might be able to jump on you quickly before you can set up your turrets. For our fourth overclock, we have high voltage crossover. This is a balanced overclock that makes it so you have 100% chance of electrocuting an enemy. This will do 16 points of damage per second over four seconds but this does come at the cost of cutting down your mag size by a little bit. I usually take the mag size in tier one to offset this. That's a pretty decent option. And other than that, it can be seen as kind of a buff for the breach cutter, although it's also maybe seen as not really that much of a buff. Doing a little bit more damage over time doesn't usually matter for the breach cutter when you could just fire another shot at something and likely kill it then, or if you've already killed an entire crowd of enemies just from one breach cutter shot. So high voltage crossover is a little bit of an odd one, but it does work okay against big enemies. The way I have it built is actually the same as the past couple builds. This is my standard breach cutter build and it works really well on this one too. I would recommend the increased mag size in tier one, just so that way you have a couple more shots in your gun. You have four in total rather than two, I think, if you don't have it. Then extra ammo in tier two, just so that we can get more shots out of this. Quick deploy in tier three, stun in tier four, and then plasma trail in tier five. Again, tier four and five, you can kind of pick whatever you'd like, as well as if you want the faster reload speed in tier three, feel free to take that too. That's a pretty good option if you're not running board ready. I decided to take EM refire booster for stubby, giving us more rate of fire, more DPS, and more electricity damage on it to make a full electric build. This is one of my favorite overclocks for stubby and it's very fun to use. For our fifth overclock for the breach cutter, we have lightweight cases. Lightweight cases gives you a slightly faster reload speed and it also gives you three more maximum ammo. That second part is really good for the breach cutter because all you really need for the breach cutter is more ammo. And the way I like building it is the same as the previous builds for similar reasons. This way we get 27 shots in total with the breach cutter that can absolutely just wreck everything. The extra reload speed is a little bit nice, but I don't really reload the breach cutter. I'm mostly just taking this for the ammo. And I think it's one of the strongest overclocks in the game currently. And this one also pairs really well with anything. And since it is a clean overclock, you can build it however you'd like. There's no real wrong way to build this. The weapon I have it paired with is magnetic pelt alignment from the Warthog auto shotgun. This will let me have the Warthog for longer to medium-ish range as well as it will still work just fine at close range and then the breach cutter for everything that i want to get really up close and personal with for our sixth overclock we have stronger plasma current stronger plasma current is a clean overclock that gets you more dps as well as it makes it so your projectile lifetime is longer both of those are really nice for the breach cutter although neither one are entirely necessary because you don't necessarily need more damage for the breach cutter but it will help out on missions like uh, Dreadnoughts. The way I decided to build this was just going for more damage with it, which I find pretty fun for just killing big things quickly. I'm going with a larger mag size in tier one, that way we can just hold more shots, more damage in tier two so we can have all the damage, although you could go with whatever ammo is really good for this one. Quick deploy in tier three, because I like that. 
Stun in tier 4, although armor breaking would make it even more aggressive, so you could take that one as well. And then plasma trail, so we get a little bit more DPS out of this. Although if you just wanted to make sure that you're hitting with your lines, triple line split is another really great option. Explosive goodbye could also be potentially a good option here too. This one is a clean overclock, again, so you can kind of build it however you'd like. You can also pair it with whatever you'd like. I decided to pair it with Stubby once again, taking well-oiled machine, another clean overclock that just increases your rate of fire and increases your reload speed, I think? I don't know, it's a nice overclock that I run pretty often on Stubby. And then for our seventh and final overclock, because the Breach Cutter has seven of these things, we have Return to Sender. This is a balanced overclock. This makes it so once you hold down the trigger of your gun, your projectile will keep going, and once you release the trigger, it will come back to you. This is all set to the same timer, so the same lifetime on the projectile applies, regardless of how far it goes or if it's coming back. So that means it could go just a little ways in front of you and then go way behind you, or you could go all the way to the end of it and then try to pull it back, stop it, at the end of its line, making it a very interesting overclock and one that can be pretty fun to play with. The downside to this though is that you lose out on 6 maximum ammo which really hurts the breach cutter, although you can potentially get double the amount of DPS out of every shot. Not always in a practical sense and not always in a consistent sense, but you can get quite a lot. It does work really well against big enemies. Against crowds though, recalling your line rarely does very much because most of the time you've already killed or nearly killed just about everything from the line and once you recall it you're probably not hitting stuff because things aren't swarming into you maybe they are in which case then this one can be pretty good and you can get at least two lines of plasma trail assuming you wish to take that tier 5 which i do in my build this is again my standard breach gutter build larger mag size more ammo quick deploy stun and then the plasma trail you can run explosive goodbye with this, although it is very awkward to get used to since you have to fire out the gun, release it, and then press the trigger again. Well, the line is still active, so you don't fire out another shot so that you can make it explode. Can be pretty fun. It can be a magic trick that you can kind of do, but it's not nearly as consistent as going with triple line split or going with plasma trail. Both of those options are generally better for this one. Since this one doesn't have a whole lot of ammo, I decided to take it with a primary weapon that does have a lot of ammo. This is explosive chemical rounds for the Loki, or the Lock 1 Smart Rifle. This one is an extremely strong overclock that does very well against crowds, it's very ammo efficient, it does really well against single targets, it does very well against big targets. Basically, you're just trying to use this as a burst fire rifle. Get three locks onto an enemy and then release it, so that way it blows up on them dealing really high damage. Breach Cutter then is for clearing up any big things or for clearing up crowds if needed. And that will do it for all the Breach Cutter overclocks. There is a lot of them for the Breach Cutter and they do change the weapon up a decent amount. There's none of them that really feel super strong besides something like lightweight cases where you just have a lot more ammo. Tell me your thoughts on the Breach Cutter and its overclocks down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.